In the world of astrophotography, there's a number of accessories that help us get better quality images faster and easier than ever before. And there's accessories out there that help us do the same plus automate our imaging sessions. Let's take a look at the world of image framing and field rotation. Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today we're gonna to be talking about image framing. More specifically, field rotation. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information or any upcoming content. Now, if you've ever had professional portraits done, you know that the photographer will pose you. And that is exactly the point of image framing. It is posing your deep sky object in order to fit your vision. And field rotation is literally just that. It is rotating your field, which gives you another level of control over your framing to allow you to get your deep sky object framed exactly the way you want it. Now, field rotation is important for several different reasons. Just to name a few, of course, is your vision. You want to be able to frame your deep sky object exactly the way you want it. Another reason that uh, field rotation is important is going to be your deep sky object size. You'll run into some scenarios where your deep sky object just won't fit in your field of view unless it is rotated a certain way. Take a look at my Andromeda image here. What you'll notice is that if I didn't have it rotated the way I did, it just wouldn't have fit in my field. Now take a look at the edges of the galaxy and where they meet the corners of the frame. There's not much room for error. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. Lastly, field rotation is important due to stacking artifacts. Now if you've seen my PixInsight workflow tutorials, you'll know that stacking artifacts are distortions and artifacts at the edges of your image. And those derive from dithering, which is just random movements of your field in a controlled manner in order to reduce noise. Also, multiple nights of imaging. Now, multiple nights of imaging is similar to dithering because as your telescope points each night, it's not always gonna be in the exact same spot. It's gonna kind of act like dithering. Now, when it comes to field rotation, uh, it's going to be kind of the same. Now, if you are just imaging over one night, it's not important. You're going to set your rotation the way you set it, image for the night, and that's that. But if you're imaging over multiple nights, and let's face it, if you're trying to get 15, 20, or even more hours on a target, you're gonna to have to do it over multiple nights. So you have to be very precise with your field rotation. Because what happens is if you have variances in your rotation, it's gonna be just like dithering. And you're gonna amplify those stacking artifacts. Now let's think back to my Andromeda image. There's not that much room for cropping. So if you're amplifying your stacking artifacts and you need to do a lot of cropping, you run a chance of or risk of needing to crop out some of your deep sky object. So being very precise with your uh, field rotation over multiple nights is very important. The good news for us is we have software that assists us with the precision of our rotation. And my go-to software is Nina. Now there's two ways to rotate your field. One is with a manual rotator, whether that be a dedicated manual rotator. And the other way is to physically take your camera and rotate it in your draw tube. The other way to rotate your field is with an automatic rotator, such as this Pegasus Astro Falcon rotator. Now Nina works with both manual and automatic. And I have a video going over how to rotate your field using Nina. And I'll have a link to that video in the description of this video if you need any help. Now, when it comes to um, using these or choosing a manual or automatic, keep in mind, both of them have pros and cons. Let's start with the manual rotator. The manual rotator 
is relatively lightweight. They're relatively inexpensive. They don't require a power supply, but they do take time. You have to actually rotate the camera yourself and Nina will help you out. Uh, you'll have a set tolerance uh, as to how close you want to be to your set rotation. And Nina will use plate solving and let you know to rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise until you reach your target. But it does take time. So if time is of the essence, then a manual rotator probably isn't the best choice. Another thing to keep in mind is a manual rotator is sometimes thicker than its automatic counterpart, meaning it has more back focus consumption. So you need to make sure that it works with your imaging train. And I have two back focus videos. I'll have links to those in the description of this video. So if you need help figuring out if your um, uh, uh, rotator choice will work with your imaging train, check those out because what you'll learn if you haven't seen those videos yet, is that the back focus will determine how racked in your draw tube is or racked out your draw tube is. And if you're using an accessory such as a coma corrector, which requires very specific back focus, you need to be able to meet that. Now, when it comes to the automatic rotator, such as this Pegasus Astro Falcon rotator, it does require a power source. Now, this particular one is the first version. They do have a second version out now where the independent power source is no longer required. It actually gets its power through the USB, which brings me to the next point. These do require another USB port to be available in order to plug them into. But the back focus consumption is actually relatively small compared to its manual rotator counterpart. These are very fast. They are very accurate and it's one step towards completely automating your imaging uh, session. These do carry more weight than its manual counterpart so you need to make sure that it doesn't put uh, your actual entire OTA heavier than what your mount can handle and that you can also properly balance. So just food for thought when choosing these and also make sure that it does fit your back focus needs. That's very important. Now, let's uh, head on over. Let me show you this in action and I'll also give you a snippet of what the manual rotator looks like. Now, for this particular demo, I have NGC 2264 as well as M81 set up for the same night. And all you have to do to start a sequence is hit play. And if you take a look about mid screen on the left side, you'll see target options, salute to target, center target, rotate target, and start guiding. Now, whether you're using a manual rotator or an automatic rotator, if you have rotate target set to on, Nina will then use plate solving to actually assist you or use the automatic rotator to rotate the target to the orientation that you have set in the framing wizard. Now again, if you need help with framing, I'll have a link to my framing video in the description of this video. Now, if you take a look at the box in the center showing sluice center and rotate, you're gonna see towards the left side of that box, about midway, an orientation box. That orientation is going to be your rotational degrees. Now Nina's taking its first exposure. It's going to plate solve. And as you see, the orientation is set at 2.99 degrees. Nina actually already just rotated and finished rotating the automatic rotator, is already taking another picture so that then it can plate solve and check the rotation. Now, Nina just accepted that rotation, actually re-slewed the telescope to the correct right ascension and declination, is taking a picture and will plate solve that picture and finish centering the target in the image. 
And that is how fast the automatic rotator is and how precise it is. Now, very similar to the automatic rotator, if you're using a manual rotator, your uh, telescope will slew. Nina will take an exposure so that then it can plate solve. But instead of automatically rotating, what will happen is you'll get a screen like this where it'll actually show you how much to rotate and in which direction. So I hope that you found this useful. If you did, do me a favor, that channel icon that just popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. And then drop a comment in the comment section. What questions do you have? What are you currently doing for framing and field rotation? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.